So before we get started on this video regarding Tana Mojo and Jake Paul, I got a couple disclaimers for you. The first one, yes, I'm aware there is a 99.9% .9 chance that this is all fake, which leads me to my next disclaimer, which is this video is not for Tana Mojo or Jake Paul. This video is about relationships and it's for you. What is up everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul, where we talk about the problem, but focus on the solution. And if you're new to my channel, what I like to do is take a look at what's going on in the YouTube community, try to see what lessons we can pull from them. And some great lessons we can learn about our relationships. So if you're into that stuff, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. And real quick, real quick before we jump into this topic, thank you so much to everybody who has downloaded my book, Cancelled. If you came here and you're a Tana Mojo fan, go download my book, Cancelled. It is free for a limited time and it is all about YouTube cancel culture. I share my own experience. I also talk about different experiences that I've seen in the community. And we kind of take a deep dive into it. The book is free at my website, but those of you who have been longtime subscribers, you notice I haven't been uploading as much recently. It's because I've been doing a lot of freelance work just to pay my bills so it would help me out a lot if you didn't get the free version and you did the five dollar suggested version but either way i'm just glad if you read it and enjoy it and learn all about why cancel culture is absolutely brutal all right so anyways like i said we're going to be talking about tana mojo and jake paul tana just released a video which is a black screen and she like talks and she wrote this little love letter to Jake because they're about to get married here in Las Vegas. <laughs> so yeah, uh, I live in Las Vegas, so I was like, hmm, I wonder where they're getting married. Could I crash that wedding? Real quick, funny story. I actually had a dream that I crashed their wedding the other day. It was, it was wacky. But anyways, anyways, so when I watch this, whenever I watch anything on YouTube, I sit there and my videos, I'm, I'm not looking so much at these YouTubers. What I'm thinking about is all of you, all of you beautiful, beautiful men and women out there who are sitting back and watching this. Because something that we need to understand is that we are influenced by the people we watch, right? And especially when you have people like Tana Mojo and Jake Paul, like they influence younger viewers, right? So I'm sitting here and whether or not people think this is real or fake or whatever it is, my question is, what are people learning from this? What are they being taught? So throughout this video, I'm gonna share some of my experience as well as some suggestions. You could take them or leave them, but I would really appreciate all of you, if you can relate to what I'm talking about, let me know down in the comments below, all right? So the first thing that I wanna say is, I do not mean to be a Debbie Downer with this video, all right? Tana Mojo, I don't know if somebody wrote that script for her or if that was just off the head, but it was adorable. But I also remember where I was the first time I looked at you and realized every moment of my life since I was first enamored by that song lyric was leading me to you. And I am a believer of love. I love love. I hope all of you find love, find your one and only somebody and you just live happily ever after. I hope all of that. So like I said, I do not mean to be a Debbie Downer, all right? Like I am very fortunate and blessed that I met the love of my life. She's sitting right there, gets to listen to me record these videos and all that stuff. But let's talk, okay? So one of the first things that I wanna talk about is jumping into relationships too fast too deep okay so the first question i have for any of you out there i know i have some viewers who have been diagnosed with mental illnesses like borderline personality disorder but you may also be someone like myself who has just experienced very intense emotions all right so those of you who don't understand um the symptoms of borderline personality disorder this is just you know one of the primary symptoms which is uh, an issue with emotional regulation, all right? The way I kind of describe this is, you don't just kind of like feel things, like you feel things. Um, some of the books that I've read on borderline personality disorder, they talk about how having BPD is kind of like being an emotional burn victim, where all of your emotions, whether they're good or bad, they're extremely intense, all right? So like when I look at Tana Mojo and Jake Paul and look at how fresh and new that relationship is, I think about all the viewers out there who feel those intense emotions. So if you can relate to that, like, let me share my own personal experience with this. Back in the day when I used to date, and a lot of this I've had to work through in therapy and stuff like that, 
But like I was always on the hunt for that somebody, that other person who is going to complete me or that other person who is going to fix me. So the way I kind of explain it is like most people when they go out on a date or they start dating somebody and like their friends ask them, they're like, hey, so how is it? And like, oh, you know, it's cool. Like we went out on the date, they were nice and kind. Yeah, I'll probably go out with them again. But for somebody like me who like really feels things like my brain will start going like okay uh, uh when are we gonna get married how many kids are we gonna have i wonder how many kids she wants to have what are we gonna do where are we gonna move are we gonna live here in las vegas are we gonna move to another part of the country what are we gonna do what are what are our grandchildren's gonna do oh my god what kind of job am i gonna get to support all of these grandbabies and send my kids off to college you know what i mean like our brain starts racing because we feel so much and we start already thinking about marriage or moving in or kids or whatever it is so if you can relate let me know down in the comments below because this is something that can actually sabotage your own relationship, right? And even if even if both people feel mutually, that's not necessarily a good thing. And I'll talk about that in a second. So the first thing is, like before I started dating my beautiful girlfriend, Tristan, I had to learn how to dial that back, all right? Like I had to learn that I can get way too intense and I could be that person. Maybe you're that person or you've had somebody like me, right? Where like, they feel so intensely that they're texting all the time and like, oh my God, I miss you, I miss you, I miss you, and all this other stuff. And that can actually set you up for some self-sabotage, right? Like you might be actively scaring people away because you feel so intensely and you let all that stuff out, all right? Like we have to realize like, even when it's Tana Mojo and Jake Paul, like if you're in a similar situation, we don't need to rush into things. We don't need to rush into moving in together. We don't need to rush into getting married. We don't need to rush into having kids, right? Because what we all forget is the honeymoon phase, okay? So the next thing I wanna talk about is so many of us gauge our relationships by the good times and not the bad times, right? That's why it's so easy to get trapped in the honeymoon phase. And when you're within these first months, you start thinking about, you know, marriage and moving in together and children and all these other things because everything is good. Everything is just, oh, so amazing, so lovely. You are living in the notebook. You have just found your one and only somebody, right? But something that I learned a long time ago, and this is a suggestion that I have for all of you, is to realize that a relationship, the strength of a relationship is not tested by how you deal with the good times, it's how you deal with the bad times, okay? Like this is gonna sound like a crazy suggestion, but I hope you follow me here. My suggestion is to not jump into any major decisions with a significant other, such as moving in together, such as getting married, such as having a baby, until you've gone through some real issues, right? And I'm not talking about like, oh, you left the toilet seat up or whatever it is. I'm talking about some real stuff. So I'm not saying like, wait for like some major tragedy, right? But you need to see how you guys are gonna deal with situations when either you or that other person is hurting, right? Because sometimes you jump into this and then when life inevitably slaps you in the face, that other person doesn't know how to be there for you emotionally, right? But now you're already moved in with them or now you're already married to them or now you're pregnant with their kid or you got them pregnant. You know what I mean? So something that we always forget, and I actually just wrote a blog post about this that I'll put down in the description below. But whenever we hear the, the phrase, this too shall pass, we always say it as kind of like, oh, don't worry, that bad thing's gonna pass. But I'm somebody who is a fan of Buddhist philosophy, and something they talk about is impermanence. And what we need to realize is good things pass too. So like I said, I'm not suggesting that you wait for like some crazy tragedy to happen or misfortune or whatever, but it's important to know that even the honeymoon phase uh, passes. So here's my question to all of you. Anybody watching this who's been in a long-term relationship, like maybe talk to us about how you and your significant other, your partner, deal, deal with those difficult times. How do they support you? What do you do to support them, right? Like we have to learn from people who have been doing this for a longer time than we have. So the last thing I wanna talk about in reference to Tana Mojo and Jake Paul, which is something that you may or may not encounter is this. Be a better judge of character, okay? So like I said, 
99.9% sure this is all fake. Even if they do get married here in Vegas, they'll probably get it annulled or whatever it is. But let's, let's pretend, let's go to another universe where this is real, where Tana Mojo has fallen head over heels for Jake Paul. She wants to marry him and all that, okay? Like if I was Tana's friend or if you were my friend and I saw this, I'd be like, look at their track record, okay? Because there's gonna be rumors and things like that about people which I don't like, like I think you should find your own evidence, okay? But when it comes to Jake Paul, there is evidence of his behavior. And what I'm referencing is emotional abuse towards Alyssa Violet and cheating on her. Same thing happened with Erica Costell. These are two of his most recent relationships and him and Erica Costell had just recently broken up. Jake Paul has not had enough time to be single to actually work on things and improve himself. Like it is physically, psychologically impossible, all right? So like I said, like if Tana Mojo was my friend or if you were my friend and I saw you jumping into a relationship with somebody who has a proven track record of being a not so great dude, I'd be like, girl, you best check yourself. All right, but anyways, anyways, those are just some tips, some suggestions from my personal experience. I've been in a million terrible relationships. It's taken me a long time to find an amazing one. So I hope you could all learn from mistakes that I've made or maybe even mistakes that you've made in the past. All right, but anyways, don't forget, check out the description, check down in the link, uh, pinned comment down below. Go get my book, Canceled Inside YouTube, Cancel Culture. It's a free download, but I would appreciate if you did the $5 suggested donation. That'd mean the world to me. All right, but anyways, that's all I got for this video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. And a huge, huge thank you to everybody supporting the channel over on Patreon. You're all amazing. And a huge thank you to everybody who has done the $5 suggested donation or even donated more. You're all amazing and I love you all so much. All right, thanks again for watching. I'll see you next time.